I'm Shannon Moore and this is Formation. Today we'll be talking about ways to live out your faith during your workday. Join us. Hello and welcome to Formation. My name is Shannon Moore. This is our weekly conversation from University Christian Church in Fort Worth, Texas, where we talk with people from a variety of walks of life about their background and uh, their spiritual work, their spiritual formation. I'm really happy to have with us today the Director of College Ministry here at University Christian Church, Austin Schmidt. Hey, how you doing, Austin? I'm doing pretty good. Glad to be here. Glad. Thank you for being on today. Did uh, How long have you been at UCC now? I think it's been about a year and a half now. Okay. Yeah, September 2022 was when I started. And as the Director of College Ministry, what sort of, how do you see that role? What What's your main job? Yeah, I see college ministry being a, a way that first, of course, I'm connecting and caring with college students. Um, whether that be local students in DFW, um, certainly across the street at TCU, but also other universities that are in, in the metro, um, supporting our students who are away, who grew up at UCC and um, now are going to school anywhere in the country or in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then like also just connecting with our congregation and finding ways to, to help support them as, as they parent college students or as um, maybe they want to be involved with different aspects of our ministry or um, maybe it's adopting a college student uh, throughout a school year. So it's, it's a really cool intersection of connecting and supporting college students and also um, connecting with our congregation and helping these two worlds kind of collide. Yeah, I hadn't really thought about how you might be connecting with the parents of college students as well. That's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, cool. I want to talk to you a little bit about just sort of your background um, as a Christian, what, where did you grow up? Did you go to church? What was sort of your childhood faith like? Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up uh, in a town called Hutchinson, Kansas. Uh, it's about six hours from Fort Worth, not too far away. Um, and so I grew up there with my parents, uh, two brothers. Um, we grew up with uh, church being a regular part of our lives. Um, we grew up going to a Mennonite church. Um, oh, tell me about that. Yeah, so there's lots of different like ways that Mennonites, Mennonite tradition can kind of be expressed. Our tradition was... Because uh, I think Amish for sure. you know, and the horses and the... Absolutely. <laughs> and I think that's usually when I say that, a lot of people kind of go yeah. to like, that's just the impression they know. Right. Um, and certainly there are those forms or types of Mennonite yeah. groups. Um, for us, like it was pretty typical Protestant experience, like... We, we had cars, we had cell phones, we had <laughs> electronics, all those things. Um, and so our church was kind of more of just emphasizing um, peace and justice in the world. Those kind of being two bigger pieces of what was important to, to the community. But um, yeah, pretty typical like Protestant expression of faith. So what would what did worship look like? Uh, like a typical Protestant worship service with music and preaching and... Yep, all those things. Some worship band, a sermon was was oh, you had a, shared. Okay. Uh, um, Is there ordained clergy and sort of that kind of leadership? Yeah, I don't remember there being a whole lot of emphasizing like ordination or mostly just it was ever knew everyone as pastor, Pastor Howard, Pastor Eric, um, that kind of thing. So gotcha. I don't know if that answers your question. Yeah, but, yeah, you know. it does. I did. I'm I'm curious. This was a small town. It sounds like. Yeah, smaller. smaller. Smaller than Fort Worth, for smaller sure. Smaller than Fort Worth. So were you, like in school, were there a lot of people from your faith tradition, or were you sort of the Lone Ranger as a Mennonite? I would say probably I was I was definitely on one of the smaller ends of, of certainly there are other Christian groups, but um, there's actually like a fair number of Mennonite groups within Kansas and around Kansas, so I wasn't probably the only one, but definitely one of the few um, that belonged to that tradition. Okay, so you're growing up in Kansas, you're attending this Mennonite um, worship service uh, church. Uh, what did what stands out to you about that experience? Like, as were there Sunday school teachers that uh, really influenced you, or a, a certain pastor that that really influenced you? What 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 do you what stands out about? that experiences in your childhood? Yeah, I would say a couple of people come to mind as far as like kind of influences. Certainly um, some of the pastoral staff, 
um, some Sunday school leaders, uh, and also my parents, um, being people who each of those three just played a kind of a different role in like helping me just lay a foundation of what does it mean to be a, a person of faith in the world and um, so definitely give me a lot of that uh, biblical knowledge or faith development or or those kinds of things um, learning to pray all, all those kind of just like essential parts of being a person of faith so yeah I was gonna ask about the biblical knowledge was that a good foundation I mean did you get a good biblical foundation I think a lot of times in Protestant churches that's where we have a failing <laughs> is yeah. that we don't know the to not know the Bible very well it was definitely preached and read and taught I would say I had a, a average amount of retention and understanding of maybe what was happening and uh, how that kind of played out so like I guess that's to say for sure the Bible is preached and taught I feel like I have a decent understanding of Scripture, but kind of going on to uh, later on in life, I come to realize, like, maybe I didn't really either listen or retain a lot of what <laughs> I heard, at least as much as I would have liked. So, um, Well, good. There's a quiz, a Bible quiz at the end of this interview. So, shoot. Okay. We'll see. I'm just joking. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> so you grow up in Kansas. Then what happened? Where'd you go from there? Yeah, I went to a small university called Friends University. It's in Wichita, Kansas. Um, and that's where I spent my years in college. Okay. Um, Friends sounds Quaker. It is. It's a it's a small liberal arts liberal arts school with Quaker heritage. Okay. Um, and so they're initially stand, uh, founded as a, a university to train and equip uh, Friends or Quakers. Mm -hmm. Those are synonymous terms. They they mean the same thing. But uh, okay. yeah, train Friends pastors and missionaries, um, and then kind of just developed into university and opening other schools of study so and that was a good experience yeah I had a really great experience there um, definitely grew a lot during my time at friends as a person as a um, follower of Christ um, yeah I started out kind of thinking I wanted to go to help people through the healthcare profession and so I started out studying um, health sciences and then kind of middle towards the later end of my journey in college realized like I still do like want to help people in a certain way but I don't know that science and labs and needles and all these kinds of <laughs> things are really my forte yeah um, and kind of started to realize like man I really like have really enjoyed the opportunities I've had to serve in churches and go to camps and invest in other people spiritually um, so kind of took a, a change of path and so I finished studying would you describe that as a call I would describe it as a call. Yeah, okay. there was definitely a period of discernment where I put all these pieces together mm -hmm. um, and started to realize, like, man, this is something I, I feel equipped for. I feel called to. I feel um, this is something I'm passionate about, and I want to use my life to serve people in this way. Um, and did the Quaker experience, do you think that helped nudge you in that direction? Did 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 you became a Quaker, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so kind of during this period of life, I just developed some friends who were a part of the Quaker church. Um, and they, as I went to a new town looking for a church to belong to, just kind of went with my friends to church and started to realize, hmm, these, uh, these Quakers are pretty similar to what I grew up with. And also with I really peace, like the justice, yeah, peace, right. justice. They added a couple other things like simplicity and other, other aspects of of kind of their tradition, but right. Um, yeah, there's very also similar. different kinds of Quakers, like Mennonites, because when I think Quaker, I think silence. Yeah, and no sort of worship service. Just when someone feels led to speak, there's speaking. Is that was that the type of Quaker experience you had? Certainly, there's like there's a whole spectrum of, of Quaker folks out there. Um, I would say uh, so very similar to like kind of contemporary worship service sermon that kind of thing. And then typically towards the end of the service, there would be a short section of silence for uh, what they call open worship, where potentially it's just like five minutes of silence uh, to reflect and to listen to God. But potentially in that space, there is a opportunity where maybe God is leading you to share a word with the congregation, um, something that um, isn't of your own desire to share. It's not from something that you, you wanted to initiate on your own, but that you felt the Spirit of God leading you to share and to admonished to others in the in the congregation and so um, for some church, Quaker churches you know that's the whole hour of service is just right. that entire time of open worship mm -hmm. um, for ours it was just kind of a short part towards the end of the service okay yeah 
And this is something I've always wanted to know. Okay. Do Quakers get a special discount on oatmeal? Shoot, man. I wish they did. I uh-huh. don't think so. Not that I know. That is a, a common misconception, though, about the uh, the Quaker man on the Quaker oats. Yeah. Like, typically, that's the first thing yeah. folks think about when, when they hear Quakers is because... But I don't think they actually had any connection or affiliation with Quakers. I think it was just initial part of their branding. Just marketing. Yeah. That's disappointing. Well, we'll be right back (laughs) and find out what happened in Austin's journey right after this word from UCC. The members of University Christian Church have a message for you. You are valuable, worthy of love, and already part of what God is doing in the world. We invite you to join us Sunday mornings for worship traditional worship in our sanctuary at 9 and 11, simple worship in the chapel at 9.30, or visit our 1010 service in Walker Hall. We are a church of open-minded people who value curiosity and recognize we don't have all the answers. We strive to be open and honest about where we are on our faith journey. We practice compassion and generosity. All are welcome at University Christian Church where you can experience Christ's courageous love for yourself and learn to carry that love with you wherever you go. Discover more about our programs and upcoming events at universitychristian.org and stay connected by following us on social media. Well, we are back and continuing our conversation with Austin Schmidt. So you had grew up Mennonite, uh, had a Quaker uh, Conversion, I guess, is a maybe a good way to put it. Huh. Um, then what happened? Yeah, so I actually finished at Friends University with a religion and philosophy degree and then a degree in Christian spiritual formation, a really cool program at the university that helps kind of combine a field of study and also what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus uh, as a business person, as a nurse, as whatever it might in be. In everyday life. In everyday life, yeah. Yeah, so a really great program that, that shaped me a lot um, as a person, as a follower, and so... Yeah, as I kind of get in the sense of calling, I decided like, I think seminary is the next step for me to kind of just continue to develop um, my understanding of scripture and also other aspects of being a ministry leader. So um, eventually I, I went to Princeton Seminary. I did a year of seminary in New Jersey and had a really great experience there. One of the just most diverse places I've ever been a part of as far as um, the whole spectrum of life mm-hmm. and faith and people and backgrounds and um, had a good time there. but. Uh, during this time, I also was doing a long distance dating with my now wife, Jenna, and realized I don't really like doing long distance dating. It's not that fun. Um, and so I took a year off of seminary. Um, we got married and lived in Wichita, Kansas for a year. Um, and I just oh, worked the call at a bank. Of Kansas. Oh, yeah, it's a beautiful place. Yes. I wanted to be back, <laughs> back on the plains. Uh, so then we, we decided to, to finish my, my seminary degree. Um, on the West Coast at Azusa Pacific Seminary um, in Los Angeles area. And so mm-hmm. we were there for about two years, um, finishing a, a divinity degree, and Jenna was working with a nonprofit there uh, to equip churches um, with just different mission and service opportunities in downtown Los Angeles, which is really cool. Um, and then kind of, yeah, during that time away was discerning that I kind of really want to be a part of college ministry. I've, I've had a started seminary, as you might have heard from going to Princeton, thinking I wanted to kind of do something more academic, Mm -hmm. uh, great place to do that, but not necessarily uh, a place that I felt was good for kind of developing my college ministry um, student-oriented goals. So that sounds like a call also. Yeah, a call within a call. Okay. Absolutely. I'm curious, especially one of the things that you talked about earlier was this intersection of faith with everyday life and your career. Can you um, talk a little bit about what that looks like for you or give us some um, some tips or practices that we might be able to incorporate into our everyday lives and our careers? Yeah, absolutely. And this is one that I kind of really started developing um, in our time in LA and have kind of really recently picked back up um, as Jen and I have moved to different part of Fort Worth in the last couple months. Um, but it's the practice of the daily commute and a prayer during a time of commute to work. Um, and so, You yeah, don't close your eyes. Don't, no, don't okay. try to close your eyes. It's okay. not, not advised during <laughs> driving to close our eyes or to, you know, silently pray with our eyes closed. Don't do that, okay. not good, okay. not safe. Um, 
but yeah, just on my on my way to per, to work, I, I just start out with some time of silence and time of uh, just praying and connecting with God. Um, if I haven't already done so that morning, like that's a great place where, you know, you're just sitting in your car, you're driving to work, uh, and if you're able to just kind of sit in a time of prayer, that's been yeah, really helpful. Yeah, I had helpful. a friend in college who told me she had like a 20 minute commute and yeah. to school, and she I remember she told me that she didn't listen to the radio on the way to school because she she said if I can't give the Lord that 20 minutes at the beginning of my day, um, then you know. I, I don't remember what the rest of that what <laughs> well, came after the, the comma, but she wanted to give God that 20 minutes. So that's a, I, I like that. It's a really practical way to connect with God on something that you do, you're do you doing anyway. Yeah, everybody's got a drive to work, a, a yeah. walk to work, a bike to work, and that's Spiritual space. multitasking in a way. It, it is a little bit. Yeah. Uh, and so sometimes that's sprinkled in with maybe there's, there's a worship song I'm playing or a podcast that's giving me some scripture or mm -hmm. meditation thoughts. Um, but just kind of using that initial start of my day to kind of get on the foundation of, I want to be connected with God today. I want to, mm -hmm. as I go forward, just kind of looking ahead at the day with God um, yeah. is a practice I've, I've been practicing a lot recently. Um, any other um, ways to live out your faith at work? Well, you work at a church. But I do work at a church. People who don't work at a church. I do work at a church. <laughs> and, and that's, uh, you know, I think that can be sometimes a perception that's had is like, oh, if you work at a church, then you're just naturally already connected with God and worshiping God. And um, I'll say, at least for me, I like that's still something I have to work at and to be intentional about um, in the same way that Yeah, others... I was going to talk to you about that. Yeah, I know, I know. We need yeah. to talk about that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have this icon that's uh, an icon of Jesus. Uh, some Christian traditions that emphasize kind of physical representations of God or aspects of biblical stories and... Um, it just kind of sits right above my desk. And mm -hmm. so as I'm going about my day, when I get up from my desk or down from my desk, that's kind of something that I'm just fixing my eyes on. And um, it's not necessarily a, a prayer that goes with it for me or mm -hmm. anything like that, but it, it's just a physical reminder of um, kind of what's my eyes focusing on for the day and what really matters. So. Yeah, one of, uh, during COVID, one of our church members cross-stitched a picture of Jesus mm. um, and gave it to me and had it framed it's it's really cool and i have it in my office and it's sitting on the floor and people and people <laughs> think that i just have not hung it yet but it's between the two chairs you know when i meet with people i'm facing people and then that picture of jesus mm -hmm. is right there in my eyesight so that i can remember that when i'm meeting with these people that jesus is there too that's awesome um, and so I appreciate this, you know, the icon that you have as sort of a, a visual reminder of Christ's presence and throughout your workday. Yeah, maybe I need to get a couple there. I'll put one by the door frame, one by the chair, yeah. one by my desk. And if you don't hang it on the wall, just tell people it's because of spiritual practice. <laughs> There you go. It's a great fallback. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I mean, there's a lot more that we could talk about, but thanks for sharing your story with us. And uh, so glad that you're here at UCC and hope that um, the college ministry just continues to grow and thrive under your leadership and uh, appreciate you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm happy uh, to be here and excited that I'm at UCC. It's been a really great start. I'm excited for the future ahead. Awesome. Well, so. we will see you next time. Uh, until then, have a great week.